Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now in this video, we're going to be specifically looking at how you can call an API from a background page in your Chrome extension. Now to help um, explain this, I'm going to use an extension that I made in the last video. So it's this a word of the day extension where we're showing a random um, word each day whenever you open a new tab. Now when we were making it uh, in the last video, the API that I was going to use didn't send me my API key in time. So I had to just um, fake it basically. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how I actually updated this code once my API key arrived. So I share my screen with you now and show you how this actually worked. Okay, so what you can see here is the original code that we were working on in the last video. We set a, a variable for our API key, a variable for the date, because the way this API works, you send in the date that you want to get the specific word of the day from, and it will send it back. So in this case, I've got it here, so it's set to grab today's date, so it automatically updates each day. But if you wanted to, in this example, you could just pass in a string like this for a specific day. Um, but again, that doesn't really matter. And then we set a variable here, which is the API, so the URL of our API call. So this includes our API key, the address, and the date. So it's just all into one string there. And then that was all we did. So what we wrote down here was that in the future, when we get our API key, we would want to call this API wait for a response, and then send the response using the new fetch function in ES6. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you in a moment. Because we didn't have the API key then, we just mimicked it using this, uh, this array down here, which we just got a random item from each time, which was fine for this example. But now let's have a look what this would actually be like using the API rather than our pretend array of words. So here is the new updated page. As you can see, there's a lot less code there, which makes it easier to maintain. But because we're calling an API, we need to add in a few extra checks in case there's an error or the API call doesn't work. So as you can see, again, this is all wrapped inside a event listener here. So this is all in a background script. Now, even if you are using Chrome Manifest version three, and it's not a background page, but a background service worker, you can still have these um, on message event listeners so you can use this um, in version three as well and with the changes in version three they're stopping you from being able to use remote scripts or remote code like that but you can still make external calls to apis um, like this in fact it's encouraged so you can have more engaging extensions and things like this as well so as you can see we do exactly the same stuff down here so we have our api key we set the date and the the variable that sets all of these in a string together and then all we do is call fetch just here. So we call the API. Then this is the part here where we're waiting for a response. We check to see the status type. Now for most APIs, if it's 200, that means it's been a success, which is the case for this API here. Sometimes, you know, it could be specific. You can hard code this on the back end, So it could be something that you're not quite expecting, but most of the time 200 is a success and anything else, something has gone wrong. So what I'm doing here, because um, the way this extension works. I have two response types, so it's the word and then a description. If there is a problem here, I'm passing that through as the actual word for that day. Um, but I'll show you how that looks in the front end in a moment as well. Down here, if the status code is 200 and this has worked, I know that I can now return this response. So what I'm doing here is I'm converting the response into JSON so I can actually use this object right away. Now, if, you, if you're not using an API that's with JSON, you can change this to text, for example, and just use the raw um, body response. But that's something you can change depending on the API that you're using. But JSON usually is the most popular type of API to use. And then all I need to do here is just return my response. So that's the function up here um, in our actual event listener. And then I just pass in the word. So in my case here, this is data, which is where we break down the response into JSON. So you can use data and then access the word parameter just here. And then for the description, it's note. And then down here, this just catches any errors that happened throughout our whole API call. And again, I just return error as the word here. Now to show you how this is called from the uh, content script part of my page or the script part of your extension. So over here, I just have a call that sends a message to our, our background page or our service worker. And it just says fetch words and waits for a response. When it gets the response, it just updates the inner HTML of our um, elements on the page with the word and the description. So again, really, really simple. And that's how that works just here. Now, the one change you might notice as well, if you look at the original version, 
because we're just sending everything um, you know in line sort of so to speak it's no there's no it's all synchronous there's no async call somewhere or waiting for anything to come from an API so we just have a response down here and just send it directly now that we're calling an API and there's this extra amount of time we have to wait we don't know how long we have to add this item down here that says return true so that our event listener stays open until we send our response so if you have any problems using this it could be because you haven't got that um, message just there now I'll show you how this looks on the front end so of all days this is the word that I've got I didn't know this word before so it actually works if I open a new tab again you can see that it's calling the API and it's fetching the correct word what you'll notice as well is there's a slight delay before the word appears so that is where we have that latency to the API so you could show some placeholder text there if you wanted now if you followed along in the last video what you'll notice is for a moment it will still say word and description so in this example I've just taken out the uh, words that I had in those HTML elements before so that it loads much smoother um, but that's how it looks and then when you actually call the API you can see here even if I put it in the browser here this is how it looks and there's the actual raw JSON um, as it comes back from the API and all that does is just make it easier to work with so I just have to get the word item just here and note where is note note down here yes yeah, so that's all I actually use there's other parts of the API you could be using um, in this example but again in your API that you're using you know you know what you want to grab from there and as I mentioned this should all work for Chrome Manifest version 3 as well talking of the uh, version 3 the next video I make is going to be looking into version 3 in more detail now the exact dates for this um, we don't know at the moment because it's changed a few times um, I think it was originally meant, originally meant to launch in 2019 and 2020 and it didn't happen um, but it definitely is going to be happening soon but the main changes are around background pages and this move from uh, background pages to either background scripts and service workers. So it's making sure that your code can run in these little blocks, which when they're not being used can just be sort of put to sleep almost and they open up again as and when they're required. And there's a few more changes around permissions. So I think the main thing they're trying to introduce is that when you actually submit your extension, you don't ask for any permissions really at the start and then you you only really ask for a permission when it's actually required so it changes the sort of flow that your extension will need to have to make sure that you are checking to see if that permission is there you know each time you're using something and if they haven't given you that permission yet it's about asking for it in a way that makes sense to the user so they know why the, the permissions actually being asked for and how it's going to be used but again I'll do a separate video looking into this and the changes you should be expecting and different places you can go to ask questions directly to Google about the changes that are coming as well. But anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.